let's start with an opening prayer. Dear Lord, there and look at these words and decide uh, what we believe, knowing that that will affect our choices and our perception, and as we're going to learn even more than we ever imagined. May we learn this and apply it in order to lead more fulfilling lives for ourselves and those around us, all harm free. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. All right. All right. We are in the nature of personal reality. We are in chapter 14, which you, which world, your daily reality as the expression of specific probable events. We are in session, um, looks like it's 653, but we're starting on page 276 after the break at the top of the page. And it goes like this. In your terms, probable events are brought into actuality by utilizing the body's nerve structure through certain intensities of will or conscious belief. Now, before I go on, you have to understand this is exactly how Seth believes it's done, and I personally believe that it's correct. So, looking at that sentence, basically he's saying that using your will, and you, that's a something you have to learn to understand what that is, or conscious belief, by increasing the intensity of it, which remember, personally I always emphasize, what is the intent? That also has to do with intensity. Using the body's nerve structure, probable events are brought into actuality. And when it's brought, brought down to that basic level, then you say, well, sure, you know, common sense. I mean, what else could it be? However, but if, by simplifying these things, two things happen. One, you begin to understand how to change things. And two, once you understand them, then you want to let go and allow the mystery and the magic of how miraculous this is come back into the moment. Just because we can describe something and then understand it doesn't really mean that we have the deeper, very deep understanding of where this energy is coming from. We're lucky to even have this knowledge to understand how we're manipulating it. Okay, So we want to be cautious and remain basically in awe of the mystery and magic of what's happening each moment. These beliefs obviously have another reality beside the one which you are familiar. Now that's not obvious to me, but let's see what he says. These beliefs obviously have another reality beside the one with which you are familiar. They attract and bring into being certain events instead of others. Therefore they determine the entry of experienced events from an endless variety of probable ones. You seem to be at the center of your world because for you your world begins with that point of intersection where the soul and physical consciousness meet. And he says, give us time. In surface terms the sense of I, in quotes, that you possess is the result of constantly emerging probable identities given continuity in time through the physical apparatus of the body with its built-in intervals of nerve reaction. You only remember the portion of your identity that is physically realized. Those portions that are drawn into corporal pattern. This is the result of the focusing and yet limiting behavior of the physical brain for effective survival behavior in your reality depends upon time reactions. The nerve patterns activity therefore causes the illusion of a present in which your consciousness appears focused and alert. And he makes that statement as a matter of fact. Okay, you may have run into it under other philosophies, other religions. However, he explains why. He explains why there is the illusion of the present moment in which consciousness appears focused and alert. We actually have a lot more going on but because of the way this is coming through in our nerve structures, all these probable eyes that are emerging, we're constantly jumping over the lapses that are in between, and it seems like we are constant. That's how we look at it. In certain terms, quote, future events exist now, but they are too fast. They jump over the nerve endings too quickly, and physically you cannot perceive or experience them as yet. Impulses possess a far different reality than physicists or biologists suppose. 
as you think now, past, in quotes, is still occurring. Now he's saying that, that as we think, as in our terms, as you think now, past is still occurring. He's not saying it's over. He's saying, based on our terms and what we believe and everything, the past is still occurring. The, quote, drag still leaps the synapses, but again, is not physically recorded. So even though the past is still occurring, we are not picking up on it. And the future is occurring, but it's too fast. Past events continue. Consciously, you only experience portions of events with your corporal structure, yet the structure itself records them. In such a way, the cells retain their memory, though you do not perceive it. And the body is aware of so-called future occurrences, though as a rule, you do not consciously sense this. At other levels of psychic activity, however, such knowledge is also available to you, but only when you disconnect your experience from the time-activated neuronal structure. And this you can do through various alterations of consciousness, often quite spontaneously adopted. Many such states can give you a far greater direct experience with the nature of your non-corporal reality than any normally conscious questioning. Which you? Which world? You can, to some extent, discover for yourself the other probable yous that are a portion of your being. Going down to the middle of the page, starting with now. Future events are also your selection of probable ones. However, and many occurrences in which you are involved speed past you too quickly for your neuronal structure. These are not served up to you as your present. So if, if you saw what he said, we also are selecting future events right now. Those are probable events, but they are occurring too fast for us to realize that we picked them up. Too fast for us to pick them up and for us to realize that they're part of us right now. And he goes on to say, they represent your experience on other than physical levels. My dear friend, Rupert, and that's who he refers to, who is the author, named Jane Roberts, has to some extent given an analogy of this in the first Oversoul 7 book, a novel. You perceive a certain event as present. Your beliefs give it entry through the nerve synapses and attract it. It then seems to become the past. You have only tuned into a portion of it physically, though. That past event continues to exist with its own future, which is in quotes, which you may or may not perceive according to which probable action you pull into your next experience of actuality. The past does have its own past, present, and future, therefore. From a given past event, you will only materialize a particular future, but the event itself continues and possesses a dimensionality of its own, or rather, a multi-dimensionality that you also possess. You can dip into cellular memory, for example. Using memory, you follow but one recognized sequence of remembered events backward. There are elements in your past that are unpredictable, however, as the elements in your future now appear to be. There is creativity in your past waiting for you, even as there is in your future. But to utilize such experiences, you must learn to alter your beliefs and to some degree, escape from that particular kind of limited conscious focus that you habitually use. And jumping down to now, give us a moment. The physical structure itself contains within it the necessary prerequisites for what you would call evolution of consciousness. And even for, within certain limits, the organization of experience in ways that might seem quite alien to you now. Since data can be organized in different fashions. Mechanisms and pathways exist, making it quite possible for you to see sound or hear color, although that is not your primary habit at this time. And if you have heard of that before, that's synthesasia, I think synthesasia. Anyway, some people have that and it's been reported, so it does exist. In certain terms, time intervals are jumped, as when a past smell or sight is suddenly perceived with present vividness, though you would say it had already occurred in the past. Under particular conditions, a memory may suddenly become more real than the event of the present moment, and so rush again into your current experience, 
as validly as when it was first lived and even seem to blot out the occurrences of the moment. This cannot happen if your physical structure did not have built-in mechanisms allowing it and if under certain conditions the normal intervals between the synapses of the nerve cells could not be leaped in a different fashion. In the same way, a future experience may also be physically perceived in your present. Now, beneath your usual consciousness, your physical organism can react to future events without your knowledge, as it can to past ones. In such cases, the intensity of the initially non-physical event is enough to break through normal neuronal patterns. If you are aware of such a future episode, you will be forced to react to it as a conscious being. In any case, your temporal structure will respond whether or not you are aware of the reasons for such behavior. The future in incident may then occur in its time sequence and you recognize it through memory, in which case your reactions in that future present will be altered because of the seemingly past memory. And that occurred in, I think, one of the first Matrix movies, and that was the question, was his awareness of that event before it happened, did it change it then when it did occur? And the answer here is yes. In your terms, that event may never come to pass, however, because it may be arising from a probable past that was once your present, but, what, but from which you have diverged. This is one of the reasons why psychics' predictions often do not seem to bear out. For at every point you do indeed have the free will, through your beliefs, to alter your experience. Your beliefs form the pivot of your present experience. Now, that's a lot of information. However, in that one session that we've just had, he's explaining how the past, present, and future exist right now, even though we generally are not picking up on it. And that as our present moment is alive and each moment this pivot because of our beliefs we can alter it so is it true not only with the past and future of this and that is actually what we draw from then in order to bring the probable experiences into this present reality based on our beliefs so that is the session it's it's big i wanted to cover it to get to the end and We'll just need a simple sentence here to remind us of what this portion is about. So, past, future, and present are occurring right now. How's it? Past, future, and present are occurring right now. How's that sound? Okay. Everybody good with that? All right. Past, future, and present. Should I add moments and present moments are occurring right now? Past, future, and present moments are occurring right now. How about? Occur now. Past, future, and present moments occur now. Yeah, let's say that. Past, future, and present moments occur. Is that two C's, one R? Yes. Now. Okay. And today is what, March 27th, 2013, chapter 14, session 654, I believe. No, 653. All right, I'll say a closing prayer. Okay, thank you, Lord. The information that we just learned opens up all possibilities for us in all ways in all times forever. While it expands our minds even trying to grasp this, help us understand what we can and over time help us understand more. May this information help us lead to a fulfilling life for ourselves and others and all those in our hearts and minds.